Thank you, Fleet, and all things are possible. We just heard it in the song, and the universe of truth, all things are possible. And the Bible states that if you have the faith as a grain of mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, this situation, this obstacle, this challenge, this problem, remove hence, it does. Because with God, all things are possible. And when we get that, whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on our higher power, it matters not. But to acknowledge that which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world, in the world of conditions that show up, the appearances that we give our power away to, the effects that are there. And they will always be there because the outer world is the relative world of conditions, appearances, and effects. But within us is that, I mean, burns with such bright light that everything and anything that comes within its energy field is healed and uplifted in this light. So our theme for the month, as I shared prior, is energy expanded. And one thing we know about energy is it neither is destroyed nor created, right? It merely changes form. And so as we come together and we acknowledge the energy of the universe, that we are embodied in this consciousness, that as we em are embodied in this consciousness, and we reach out one to the other, if I'm in that place in me and you are in that place in you, they're truly... Now, last year at this time, I was presenting in Amsterdam at the uh, Peace Monument in the Amsterdam Square. And it was such an honor and a privilege just to be in this energy. And uh, not far from Amsterdam is, of course, The Hague, which is the Peace Palace that uh, was put into place during and after World War II. And they were short $14 million on building this amazing peace palace. And Andrew Carnegie, an American citizen, gave the remaining $14 million so that the peace palace at The Hague, where so much has gone that what I believe and I believe it with all my heart and all my soul, is that we can tip the scales in favor of spirituality, in favor of peace. And every time we uplift our energy field, and remember, we take our consciousness out of the realm of personality, out of the relative world, and we allow ourselves to realize that the eternal verity is that energy of God, whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on our higher power, it matters not. But to keep realizing that that which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world. And so when I was presenting in Amsterdam, and I was uh, at the Peace Monument, and it's outside, and it's a beautiful square there, and I was sharing about uh, peace and that I felt that peace was possible and, and giving some illustrations and uh, during my talk this I bet he was about three years old three or four he was throwing a hat back and forth and he was running back and forth and I believe that whatever happens in our life that we draw the larger circle and we include it so as this little three-year-old boy is running back and forth and he's throwing his hat and I said and this little boy and the camera veered to him. I said, this little boy is our future generation, and he's throwing his hat in the ring for world peace. So whatever is going on in our experience, let's draw the larger circle. Let's include it. And as the dark filters up and bubbles up, guess what? Out. And return to its native nothingness from whence it came, because in truth, it is neither person, place, nor thing. And every year, for years, I've gone to uh, Nigeria to speak to 25,000 students and faculty in Africa. And someone had shared a story with me about a Dr. Charles Molly. And uh, he was originally in the Nairobi area, several miles from you know, Nairobi, several hours, but in that general area. And he had shared that when he was six years old, 
His parents abandoned him. That's right. They abandoned him when he was six years old. And what happened was that he said when he was 16 years old, he, you know, it was a hand-to-mouth existence. And what happened was that within the energy field of his life, when he was 16, he walked to Nairobi, which was really several days' walk. And he said that he got a job and that he worked very hard. Then he got another job. He worked three jobs. Finally, he had saved enough money to buy a bus. And he would escort people around in his bus and he would make money. Then he had enough money to buy another bus and another bus and another bus until he had a fleet of buses and became very, very wealthy. And he said that one day he was in Nairobi and three young men approached him. And uh, they wanted money. And he said he absolutely, you know, could see that they were good for nothing and he hadn't earned any money and sold them no. And they are and they broke his window and they stole his bus. And when he ceased to let his anger go, he went into a place of compassion. And he thought, I was those boys. I was those boys. I had forgotten from whence I came. I had forgotten that I was abandoned at six years old, that it was a hand-to-mouth existence, that I walked to Nairobi when I was 16 years old. I would forgotten all of that. And I went within, and he said, and I began to weep. And I wept for four hours. And I felt such guilt, and the faces of those three boys were ingrained in my consciousness. And then he said he was in prayer several months later, and he heard the voice of your wealth and give it to the poor. So he went within and he thought, what is this going to look like? This is quite a demand from the universal intelligence. And he decided that he would start an orphanage of children that were abandoned just like he was. And he found this great parcel of land and and actually had buildings on that needed to be rehabbed, but it was the perfect place. However, after he bought it, he discovered, and there was a, a tremendous drought, there's no water. So he said he prayed every day for 21 days for water, and that he heard the voice of God, this energy of God, are over. Walked 30 pieces here, 30 paces there, and he said he was guided and directed that he took his wife and they found this spot. And he and his family began digging for water and they dug for several hours. And finally he said, water began to trickle up and more water and more water and it raised. And this spring that they had allowed themselves to funnel into, created such a farm and produce, practically supports the entire orphanage, and he has, within his energy field, and it all is energy, he has taken in 10,000 orphans in Africa. And his declaration and his vow is that no child shall go uncared for. No child shall go uncared for. And so a sociologist visited Joy there, and we know that Joy is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. Joy. And that out of his experience, and also turning his back on the three boys, and that something opened up inside of him, I was them. I had a hand-to-mouth existence. I begged on the streets. But at 16, I walked to Nairobi. I got gainful employment. I bought buses that allowed me to create this amazing... Where, I, where they found the water, and I love this, where they found the water, they named it Jacob's Well. 
the well that will never, ever go dry, the well that is forever springing forth. And when we understand that there is an infinite well within each of us, and one of the things that moved me when I was in Amsterdam last year at this time is I went to the Anne Frank house and I was so deeply influenced by Anne Frank. And when I was 14 years old, I did a book report on the diary of Anne Frank. And it returned to me with an A+. Plus. And I would, what absolutely opened me at 14 years old what a girl made in her diary. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when not feeling it. I believe in God even when he is silent. I believe in all these things. And to, if we look at what she endured at 14 years old, and that absolutely emblazoned on my heart. Shining. I believe in love even when not feeling it. I believe in God even when he is silent. And what was so powerful for me is that just growing up in the atmosphere of alcoholism and tremendous domestic violence, my sister took her own life. Uh, it carried me. Those words carried me through my own experience, my own concentration camp in domestic violence. So that when I reached the other side of it and thought, I can serve out of this. So I was called to spirituality. My sister was a product of her environment. And whenever I would go to court when she was uh, driving under the influence or she was whatever, and I would go to court, and I released in my custody. And uh, she is a product of her environment of, a, of domestic violence. And the judge, and it was more than one judge throughout the years, would always say, you are her sister, why aren't you this way? And I said, because I know, I absolutely know that I have other choices, and I believe the moment of enlightenment, we know we have a choice. So today we all have a choice about this field of all possibilities. And that people who have had uh, brain tumors and come out on the other side of it, I'm thinking of Ian Baum, who is an editor writer, who said that he was at a, uh, his swimming uh, pool and all of a sudden, everything turned sepia, and he woke up two days later in the hospital from epileptic, epileptic fits and then realizing that he had a brain tumor. And he said when he came out of the surgery, he said there was a unified field, and he actually felt that he could put his hand through the wall, that all inanimate objects were energy. Everything, the chair was energy, the table was energy. Everything was energy. So if we, and as Tesla said, if you want to know the secrets of life, think in terms of energy, vibration, and frequency, taking it out of the realm of personality and into the realm of energy, then if we acknowledge this energy, then we really don't need to judge anything outside of us. And every day when I awake, I make a declaration. And that declaration is not only the unity, prayer, protection, but it's a declaration of acknowledgement and of gratitude that we are in the world and yet of a higher spiritual vibratory frequency. And that when it looks like, you know, little people are running through our presentations, we draw the larger circle, we acknowledge the future generations throwing their hat in the ring and that we can tip the state by the very thoughts that we think and the energy that we're putting into the universal mind, and that all things work together for good to them that love. All things. So on this day, as we look at energy expanded, that energy is neither destroyed nor created, we make the shift, and we make that shift 
to a higher vibrational frequency and live from that place, that octave. And I do not participate in all of these conspiracy theories and gossip and all the stuff that goes on. I don't want to lower my vibratory frequency. And when I have somebody, you know, that does something amusing and they private message me something on Facebook, it's usually colleagues, I will add that. I write back and just say, I'm keeping my consciousness above this. I want to know the truth there for myself, for my family, everyone in the global community. I want to rise above this level of judgment, even though it's amusing and it's funny and, you know, we laugh. But the truth is, let's take it up. Let's tip the scales in favor of spirituality. Let's tip the scales in favor of love. Let's tip the scales in favor of peace. The peace, the, the peace of God, whatever we conceive our God to be, whatever name we put on our higher power. That which is within us is greater than that which resides in the world in the world of conditions, appearances, and effects. Let us know with the 14-year-old girl, I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I'm feeling it. I believe in God even when he is silent. That that energy, that groundedness, that we're inanimate objects, we can see it, the molecular structure, that everything is energy. Let's take our energy up on this day to a higher vibratory frequency and begin to really, really embody what we want to see on our planet rather than what we're dissatisfied with and putting our energy there and creating more of it. It keeps it in place every time we criticize it. But if we take it up, and I'm not saying we agree with the appearances and the effects, but if we take it up to a higher spiritual reality and let these facts go, then we begin to embody heaven on earth, the highest vibratory frequency that we can possibly experience, all going somewhere. Do you know where that is? Higher, higher yet. yet. Where is it? Higher, higher yet. yet. Where is it? Higher, higher yet. yet. Because I am in a high place and I will not come down. None of these outer things move me. I am in a high place, and I will not come down. Namaste. The God in me celebrates the God in you, and the God in you celebrates the God in me. And if I am in that place in me, and you are in that place in you, there is only one of us. And I say shalom, the peace that passes all understanding. And God bless us, everyone, including little Miss Minnie here, running around and just uh, acknowledging that everything is interesting, aren't we? Know that you are loved, you are cared about, and that we are going higher. And so it is. Now take it away.